Hello and welcome to another episode of JDCTR. Today we are looking at the Sonos Play Bar. So the Sonos Play Bar represents Sonos's first entry into the world of audiovisual sound stuff. It's the first speaker they produced designed specifically for use within the TV sort of film area, if you like. So it is quite an interesting product. So let's make a start by having a look at what is in the box. As you can see, the play bar comes in a rather large box, making filming and unboxing a little difficult. You'll have to excuse my odd socks. In the box, you'll get the play bar itself and a box of goodies. In here, you'll find the instruction and warranty booklets, the power cable, an optical cable to connect the bar to the TV, and also an ethernet cable. Now the first thing you're going to want to know about the Sonos Play Bar is how to connect it to your TV. So before I go any further, I just wanted to let you know this is not my house. So unfortunately we're going to be doing a temporary installation. My house is currently undergoing some quite serious renovations and there's in no one fit state to have a Sonos in it. So this will be installed once my renovations are complete and I will let you know. Anyway, to connect this up to your TV, you need to ensure that all your peripherals, your DVD players, Blu-ray, Sky, what have you, is all connected to the TV itself via HDMI or what have you. Then Sonos ah, provides you with a rather lovely optical cable. And yes, this Digi Home TV does have an optical out. So firstly, you undo this. Plug it into your back of your TV and then you are ready for the play bar. Once you've positioned your Sonos bar, firstly connect the digital optical out that you've just plugged into the back of the TV and then finally connect the power cable. Once the power is plugged in, you will then need to set up your play bar as if you would with any other speaker. As I have covered this in an earlier video in terms of setting up the Sonos stuff, please see my video that's linked there-ish. Although the play bar is similar to all other Sonos devices, the setup is very slightly different. As you can see here, you have the option to add a sub and also some surround speakers. We won't be covering that in this video, but I will link to the video when I get around to covering it. The app will also ask you to test your incoming TV sound, turn off your TV speakers so that all the sound will come through your play bar, and also it will help you set up the play bar with your existing TV remote. This will allow seamless usage of the play bar as it will pick up on the infrared signals of the TV remote when adjusting the volume. True play tuning is also very slightly different for the play bar as you'll be asked to tune from the place you normally sit to watch the TV and also to scan the room like you have to do with other Sonos speakers. So the Sonos play bar is made up of nine integrated speakers. You have six woofers and three tweeters and they are arranged in such a way that Sonos call it optimised for directionality, whatever that means. So after spending a bit of time with the Sonos play bar, watching a bit of TV and then also listening to some music on it, the TV aspect of the play bar is actually really good, I, well it's what it's designed for, so it's really quite obvious and it's, I wouldn't call it immersive surround sound, but it, yeah, you can hear like left and right really distinctly and it's just a really clear, crisp sound for the TV. However, if you're buying this primarily for music, it does fall short. In fact, I would almost argue that two Play Ones in stereo sound better than the Play Bar does just for music. But I guess the Play Bar was never designed for music. It can do music but its primary function for the TV, it's very good at. But as part of being part of the Sonos family, it's not quite as good on the music front. So I hope you enjoyed my review on the Sonos Play Bar. Be sure to click a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more.